order for me to explain or for anyone to even possibly get a glimpse of how much he's he's done and he's healed me um, you got to know what I've been through and what my life was like beforehand um, I was molested probably from the age of five or six until about I went, until I was nine I don't remember much before the age of seven at all uh, most kids I know can remember my girls early like two and three years old I don't remember hardly anything but during my early, early childhood, during the period of time for the molestation, I was, um, I was ignored. Um, I, I don't ever remember, I, because I can't remember a whole lot, I, I, it just was like nothing was there. Um, my mother was an alcoholic that affected, I'm the oldest of four children, that affected all of them in different ways. Um, and my father was a classic, classic enabler. And I used to have a horrific problem with depression as a kid. I mean, I would wake up literally feeling like there was a, a huge, like in the cartoon things, those anvils, is that what they call them, those anvils? Somebody dropped, I, I felt like I was literally carrying one on my chest. I married my first husband right out of high school. I met him on a retreat with the Catholic Church. I, I was married to him for about seven and a half years. We had, we had had no children together. One day he comes home from work and he says to me that um, actually it was late. We were just, just about to go to bed and he says, I had sex with my secretary. His secretary was 16 years old. I said, you know, I don't want this. I divorced him. I was searching for that. I studied metaphysics. I studied meditation. I went to classes. I took Tai Chi. Ekinkar was a path I ended up studying for many, many years. And they, they referred to it as the ancient science of soul travel, the religion of light and sound, basically of the inner and outer worlds, the inner being the dream state, the outer world being the physical, and each is a ref just as real as the other. And Satan has a way of twisting things to make the abnormal seem normal and the things that are so such an abomination to him he makes them seem holy and they're not my older daughter's father I honestly loved that man so much I loved him I, I, he he was so had such a rage inside of him he was extremely intelligent I was later to find out he was sociopathic um, he was extremely abusive um, the pain got so bad it overrode any love I felt. And then I grabbed it, he went out just about every night for a few hours, um, and I, I grabbed my baby's medical file with a shot records, laundry basket full of work clothes, and took her, and I left. After that, uh, I got a call from my in-laws while I was staying at my mother's house, and um, they lived in Maryland, and they told me that Mark was dead that he committed suicide. He threw himself in front of an ongoing railroad train in North Miami, Florida. It was during that time period um, that I studied Wicca and I actually practiced it. Um, I practiced it big time. I remember about a, close to a year after I came up here, maybe it wasn't even a year, my brother-in-law was talking to me and um, he was uh, tell me that you know my religion hadn't done anything why don't you try just taking them there they need some kind of foundation they need something to to hold on to it's not gonna hurt I was grasping for control so much control of my life control over I didn't have control as a child of things I went through I didn't have control in that I had the control to the extent I could walk out the door but I was sick but God God wants us God God can't take the reins of our life if I'm clutching them okay I, I had to let go and I didn't know but he had to get me to a certain point where I would surrender anyway he started thawing my heart and shortly thereafter I rededicated my life to Christ now I wasn't healed then at all but I made a choice to choose God and I chose God and I chose him not any other gods <laughs> There's no other God before him. I've studied so, so many things. I've practiced so many things. I've heard God in so many ways. But I can look back over my whole life and there's so many times I should have been dead. And so many times, you can spend thousands, people spend thousands of dollars on counselors. And there's nothing wrong with them, okay? They spend so much money 
on trying to get well, trying to dig through all the stuff that life throws at them. And Jesus is the ultimate healer. He's the ultimate counselor. If you've ever been hurt by anything in that type of pain, I had a ton of that locked up. And it's gone. I woke up and it's gone. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Those words would make me bawl like a baby. I mean, and I would get so embarrassed in, in church and I'd be looking at the window. I always sat plastered to the wall and I'd be looking out the stained glass window. Or I'd be looking down. I couldn't sing the words because of the meaning. They had a new meaning, you know, they had a new meaning. He's, he's my savior, my healer. He's my king, my God, my love. I'm falling in love. I used to pray that I would fall in love with him. He took away a lifetime of pain, and I really mean a lifetime of just, you know, some people say, oh, that's life. It's not life. That's not what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to hurt. He wants us to live and to love and to serve Him. And it's like, I can't wait to go home and read my Bible and read more about Him. I can't wait to go to church. I can't wait to spend time in worshiping. I mean, He healed me. He's got, there's a divine plan. There's a divine plan. He, my, he knew every sin I was going to commit in my life. He knew everything that I was going to think, say, or do. He knew all the mistakes I was going to make. And he's got a plan for where he's going to put me. And I'm very, very, very conscious to make certain that anybody that ever knows me and knows what I came from and knows how I was healed, it's him that healed me. He healed me.